Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to episode 11 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I'll be given a brief introduction to stepper motors. I'll discuss the types of stepper motors that are available. Additionally, I'll talk about NEMA sizes, bipolar and unipolar motors, and a little bit about driving them. Keep in mind that I'm neither an engineer, machinist, nor a teacher. I'm a home hobbyist wishing to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. It is my hope that over time, as the videos are released, the hobbies can leverage them in their attempt to make their own CNC machine. Additionally, I hope to flatten the learning curve and help people avoid some of the more confusing parts along the way. With that out of the way, let's get started. There are two methods of driving the axes of your machine available to the home hobbyist. This includes servo motors and stepper motors. Both options have pros and cons. For example, Servo motors generally have more torque at higher speeds but require feedback circuitry to determine the position of the motor. Steppers, on the other hand, have less torque at higher speeds but can be operated in an open loop, meaning that you don't have to have position sensing circuitry because the location of the stepper is controlled by the step location of the shaft. Servo motors are generally more expensive than steppers because of the additional circuitry required to operate them. But if your application needs high speed and high torque, then these are the best choice. Stepper motors, on the other hand, are cheaper, easier to drive, and can be geared down to provide more torque at the cost of speed. For most beginners getting into CNC, the stepper motor is the most affordable option and can generally be purchased in sizes large enough for your application. The remainder of this presentation will focus on stepper motors. So what is a stepper motor? Well, stepper motors are brushless DC motors that are manufactured in a manner that allows the rotor of the motor to be moved in discrete steps. For example, most common steppers used by the hobbyists require 200 steps to complete one revolution of the motor. Stepper motors are also specified by the degree of rotation for each step. The 200 stepper motor that I previously mentioned is also called a 1.8 degree stepper motor. The degree of rotation is calculated by taking 360 degrees, or one revolution of the motor, and dividing by the number of steps required to make one revolution. So, 360 degrees divided by 200 steps gives a resolution of 1.8 degrees per step. Stepper motors are wound with multiple coils commonly called phases and are energized sequentially to move the rotor in a single step. Depending on the direction that the coils are energized, the motor can be turned both clockwise and counterclockwise. A piece of hardware called a stepper driver generally sits between the stepper motor and the Linux CNC controller. The driver receives the step commands and the direction from Linux CNC controller and translates them into signals to the motor coils to move the motor a step in the direction that it's instructed to do. There are generally three types of stepper motors manufactured. These are the permanent magnet, variable reluctance, and hybrid stepper motors. Permanent magnet stepper motors are constructed so that the motor has magnetic poles built into the rotor. Due to space limitations, the number of magnetic poles that are manufactured in these motors are relatively few. These motors are commonly called can stack motors and are generally inexpensive to produce. The problem with them is the number of steps per, per revolution is generally low, typically from 24 to 48 steps. These motors are not generally suited for CNC application for this reason and their small sizes. However, these motors can create quite a bit of torque, something that is important when driving the axis of a machine. The variable reluctant stepper motors are made with non-magnetized soft iron rotors. Unlike the permanent magnet stepper motor, the variable reluctance motor does not contain any permanent magnets. Instead, it relies on its low reluctance of the soft iron to align the poles of the motor when the coils are energized. These motors can be made with many poles giving a high number of steps per revolution. These motors also cost more than permanent magnet motors because of the gear tooth design of the rotor. The drawback, however, with a variable reluctance motor is that it tends to be noisy regardless of how they are driven and are driven in full step mode only. 
Hybrid stepper motors are a combination of both the permanent magnet and the variable reluctance stepper motors and give the best of both worlds. The rotor is constructed with the gear tooth metal caps placed on permanent magnets, in effect giving the magnetic poles around the rotor. These are the most expensive of the three options because of the complexity of manufacturing. But this is offset by the fact that they have good torque, run quietly, have good step resolution, and can be run in a number of stepping modes. Although I say that these are the most expensive of the three stepper motors, they are still well within the budget of the home hobbyist. This will be the type of motor you will want to acquire for your CNC machine. Stepper motors can have any number of coils arranged in what are called phases. When coils are energized, the coils of the same phase are energized together. Most motors that the home hobbyist will encounter will have either two or four phases. The more phases a motor has, the smoother it will run. A quick count of the wires will give you an indication of the number of phases a step motor has. For example, a stepper motor with only four wires will be a two-phase motor, each consisting of one coil. Don't get caught up in the technicalities, as these things will become more clear as we go along in the series. Recall that when the coils are energized sequentially that the stepper motor shaft will turn. Depending on the how, how the coils are wired together internally will depend if how the coils are energized. Stepper motors are either set up to be bipolar stepper motors or unipolar stepper motors. Occasionally, you'll find a motor that can be wired for either bipolar or unipolar modes. To truly understand this, you'll need an understanding of how stepper motors operate. On the screen, there are two YouTube links that do a very good job of explaining how the motors work. I will also put the link in the description below the video. Although not mandatory, I strongly urge you to spend some time and watch these videos. The takeaway here is that you'll need a driver for the type of motor you have, either unipolar or bipolar. Most motors sold for CNC are bipolar stepper motors, some of them having eight wires that can be wired to work either bipolar or unipolar modes. Additionally, drivers will need to be selected for the current rating of the motors that you have. Stepper motors come in a variety of sizes referred to as NEMA sizes. NEMA, which stands for National Electrical Manufacturer Association, has set forth standards for many things, and motors are one of them. This is done for interchangeability from one motor mounting to another. Stepper motors are built in a large selection of NEMA sizes, including but not limited to 11, 14, 17, 23, 34, and 42. These numbers define the size of the mounting flange on the motor. These numbers are pretty easy to get a grip on. For example, a NEMA 23 motor will have a square mounting flange 2.3 inches wide. So you see the relation between the number and the size. In addition to the mounting flange or motor size, stepper motors have a speed and torque rating. When shopping for a motor, it is important to observe the graphs that indicate how the motor performs at different speeds. These are called torque speed curves, and what you will notice is that as the motor increases in speed, its available torque will decrease. The torque specifications that are normally advertised on a motor are what are normally called holding torque. For example, some stepper motors that I have are rated at 450 ounce inch. What this means is that if the motor coils are powered up and not moving, that the motor will hold 450 ounces at a levered distance of one inch. Another way to think of this is imagine you have a rod attached perpendicular to the stepper motor shaft. If this rod was, say, 10 inches long and the motor is powered, it would take more than 45 ounces, 2 pounds and 13 ounces, of force to move the motor from its current position. When looking at the torque speed curves, you will see that the torque drops off as the motor speeds up. You will need to look at this based on your application. If, for example, you're building a CNC router and will be cutting at 100 inches per minute, you'll have to calculate the motor RPM based on your linear system and compare that to the forces that it takes to cut the material at the depth of cut you selected. I know that sounds complicated, and again, I urge you not to stress these details. I built my first CNC router using stepper motors I found from an old Genicom printer. They were a little lightweight for what I was doing, but I was still able to use them just the same just at a slower feed rate than I wanted. 
I will, if there's interest later, talk about some of the finer points of motor selection and machine building that I've learned over the years. For now, suffice it to say that a Google search of what you're trying to build will reveal the size of motors that you might need. So where to from here? Well, up to this point we've talked a fair amount about stepper motors, but only in very general terms. I have avoided going into stepper motor specifics to prevent muddying up the water with confusing details. The series is, after all, intended for people just getting into the hobby. I do still highly recommend that you watch the two videos I suggested earlier. You will find a link to them down below the video in the description box. In the next video, I want to discuss stepper drivers, the types that are available, some places they can be purchased, and timing specifications. We're getting close to the point where we can connect some steppers to the Linux CNC and start driving them. We've come a long way, but the road continues on and we still have more to cover. In the meantime, I encourage you to watch some YouTube videos on stepper motors and how they work. Start looking around for stepper motors that might serve your purpose. If money is an issue, think about stuff that you can salvage stepper motors from. For example, large printers and copiers. Some of the devices will have drivers that you'll be able to salvage too. As I very frequently said, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking about getting into it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.